organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, we take an in-depth look at the hidden dangers of a popular new drug. And coming up in sports, find out how our Hawkeyes did at several different events this weekend. That's all coming your way next, right here on Daily Iowa TV. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now, you can see the news every night on Daily Iowa TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning into your Sunday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm John Detcott. People across Iowa City are gearing up in their hoodies as they get ready to march in the name of justice. Right now, you're looking at a rally in South Carolina where demonstrators gathered to call for justice for Trayvon Martin. The 17-year-old Florida native was killed by a neighborhood watch captain in February. Although it was later determined the teenager was only carrying a few snacks at the time, police did not arrest the alleged killer because he claimed it was self-defense. Activists will hold their own march tomorrow in Iowa City. The event will be held in the Ped Mall at 6.30, and organizers are asking people to wear hooded sweatshirts to show their support. Martin was wearing a hoodie at the time of his death, and the clothing item has since become a unifying symbol for demonstrators. And you can tune in tomorrow to Daily Iowa TV for full coverage of the event. And synthetic marijuana is growing in popularity, but unlike its illegal counterpart, this drug carries with it some very dangerous side effects that have health officials worried. Daily Iowa TV's Tasha Woods takes a look at the hidden dangers behind this troubling trend. This synthetic drug, widely known as K2 or Spice, is a constant battle in the Iowa Congress. It's difficult to detect during routine drug tests, making it seem a little safer for legal reasons. However, consumers need to know what risks they're really taking. I would set my alarm early so I could wake up and um, I would smoke maybe one or two hitters of Sidney Green, my favorite. And afterwards, uh, usually the right side of my temple would be up in the far corner of the room and my left jaw would feel as low or in the corner behind me. Emergency rooms continually see a rise in patients due to synthetic pot. According to the American Association of Poison Control, 4,500 calls involving synthetic drugs were made from 2010 to 2011. When, when people have been using synthetic marijuana, when they come into the hospital, they usually they're scared because they have kind of a psychotic response to it. Uh, it's, it's an unusual out-of-body response. Very little research has been completed regarding the marijuana alternative, so long-term effects have yet to be recorded. Immediate effects of the drug may include anxiety, paranoia, agitation, hallucinations, tremors, and seizures. And like any other drug, can greatly impact daily lifestyles. I really just focus on spice, um, and I stopped going to class. Um, I just pretty much lost everything else. Um, my GPA plummeted. Um, I graduated valedictorian in high school and uh, finished the, the 1.03 semester GPA last semester um, and I'm pulling A's and B's now again this semester but um, you know it just it, it really really affected my life negatively. Now K2 can be sold in any convenience store or gas station where for just ten dollars you can get an ounce of K2. Taisha Woods reporting for Daily Iowa TV. The state legislators set to vote on a bill that would help make the government more transparent. The bill would create a seven-member board to centralize public record requests. And the idea arose after the governor's office received harsh criticism from people who felt their requests were being ignored. The Senate passed the bill last year and is expected to come up for debate in the House either tomorrow or Tuesday. And still to come on Daily Iowa TV, we take a look at how student government is working to improve multiculturalism on campus. And in sports, find out which Hawkeye gymnast walked away with a silver medal this weekend. And that's all coming up in a bit, but first let's go to Muriel Coney for your local weather forecast. Muriel? Thanks, John. And let me tell you, it is just beautiful outside today. The blossoming trees on the Pentecrest aren't the only thing that caught my attention. People are out studying and lying all around the old Capitol building, just really taking advantage of the weather. And it looks like this awesome weather will not continue into tomorrow morning, where you should expect some cloudy skies, and these clouds will stick around into the afternoon with temps not as nearly as high as today. But we will see a slight increase in temperatures going into the evening and look 
look into the rest of the week. A few showers are expected, but we will see well, we will be treated with some sunny skies as well. Temperatures will get as high as the mid-70s and as low as 54 degrees throughout the week. So it's definitely not bad for spring. Back to you, John. Thanks, Muriel. President Obama's nominee to run the World Bank is a former UI student. The president selected Jim Young Kim, the current president of Dartmouth University and former faculty member of the UI's College of Dentistry. Kim was born in South Korea but raised in Muscatine. And UI student government leaders are working to improve multicultural awareness on campus. UISG will launch a new campaign next year aimed at promoting cross-cultural communication among freshmen. Leaders said they also want multicultural student organizations to be better represented on campus. UISG held a summit this afternoon to field concerns from students, and officials said they hope to make the university community as inclusive as possible. Um. It's the idea that you need to get to know the person and their background and where they're coming from in order to make them feel as comfortable as possible. People are looking for is a way that they can uh, have have more collaboration within all the student organization and, and, uh, and, and the student government and also the university itself. Coralville man died this weekend after crashing his motorcycle in Iowa City. 28-year-old Jonathan Hintz was driving along Highway 6 when the accident occurred. Police records say he was wearing a helmet at the time of the crash and no other injuries were reported. And now Daily Iowa TV's Lauren Moss is here for your look at Hawkeye Sports. All right, thanks, John. The gloves were back on at Dwayne Banks Field this weekend as the Hawkeye baseball team opened up Big Ten play with a three-game series against Northwestern right here in Iowa City. Now let's jump into Saturday's game where one of Iowa's aces, Matt Dermody, had control of the mound through five and a third's inning. Dermody struck out nine Wildcats but gave up only three runs that day. The offense Saturday wasn't enough for the Hawkeyes to battle back against Northwestern, recording only six hits and leaving runners on base at significant times. Friday and Sunday's game showed a little more spark in the bats for the Hawks and allowed them to take the series from the Wildcats. Consistency on offense is still the piece of the puzzle that Iowa is missing, but head coach Jack Dom is confident behind a solid pitching staff that the Hawks will soon be on a steady roll. We haven't done a very good job uh, of, of getting ourselves on a roll. We're also when we win a couple games, and it looks like we're getting ready to turn the corner, and then then we stub our toe like we did today from an offensive standpoint. It always seems to be uh, offensively, so we need to get a little more consistency, competing uh, every at bat. You know, we struck out ten times offensively today. Um, that's that's too much. So I, I look more towards our offense than anything else because that pitching's given us a chance. On a Saturday, if you only give up three runs, uh, there's a good chance you should should win that game. Just a quick recap: the Hawkeyes did take the series from North. Western, beating them Friday night 3-2 on a walk-off in the ninth, then losing Saturday 3-0 and won 3-1 on Sunday. Now this was an exciting weekend for female gymnasts in the Big Ten as they competed in the Big Ten Championships right here in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes' best performances of the night came from the floor events, where the team earned fourth place in the event and junior Emma Stevenson walked away with a silver medal. That's pretty exciting. I actually had no idea. I, I mean, I knew I probably had one of the higher scores, but I wasn't expecting to be halfway point leader. I mean, I'm really excited. I hope to keep the title, but I'm also completely happy just to be helping the team in the way I did. Everybody stepped up. Um, the atmosphere was crazy. To look into the crowd and see the sea of black and gold, it made such a difference. Um, 195, four, counting a fall. It's a championship team. We're very proud of them. When it was all said and done, the University of Minnesota finished in third place, Ohio State in second, and Nebraska walked away with their first Big Ten title. Annie Costable, Daily Iowa TV Sports. The Big Ten Championships marked the end of the season for the Hawkeyes with just the NCAA Regionals and Nationals left on their schedule. Also this weekend, the women's softball team took away one win out of the three-game series home opener versus the Wisconsin Badgers. On Saturday, the women lost the first game 1-0 and then came back in the second game winning 4-3. Then after a tough match today, the women unfortunately lost to the Badgers 5-4. You can catch them this Wednesday at home against Nebraska and after a full Packed Hawkeye Sports Weekend. That is all I have for you tonight. So back to you, John. Thanks, Lauren. And now let's take a look at some of the top headlines from across the globe. Demonstrators in Paris held a silent march today to denounce terrorism following a string of deadly shootings. Last week, a man in southern France allegedly killed seven people, including three children, before being killed in a shootout with police. The man's brother has been arrested and charged with conspiracy to prepare acts of terrorism. And President Obama was in South Korea today for a three-day summit aimed at improving nuclear security. 
The president toured the DMZ and met with South Korean soldiers. And President Obama has been very active in calling for tighter security on nuclear technology, particularly for Iran. And Pope Benedict was in Mexico today to meet with President Felipe Calderon. It's the Pope's first trip to the world's second largest Catholic nation. And the Pope will continue his Latin American excursion when he heads to Cuba on Monday. And now take a look at this. A goose in Urbandale, Iowa has been harassing shoppers at a local strip mall. It's all in the name of love, though. The male goose is just protecting his mate who decided to lay her eggs in one of the mall's flower pots. This kind of behavior isn't actually that unusual. Most Canada geese will choose a mate and stay with him or her for the rest of their lives. And only with Daily Iowa TV can you get a sneak preview of tomorrow's print edition of the Daily Iowa. Read about why Delegate Tim Judd plans to tour Iowa, plus find out how officials at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics hope a new accreditation system will help improve the education of medical students in residency programs. And that'll do it for this edition of Daily Iowan TV. Check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.